Hi guys, 18 Dap here and welcome to this match preview for tomorrow night's rearranged fixture. It's Doncaster Rovers versus Tranmere Rovers in League 2. Let's get the video started. So guys, welcome to this match preview. Doncaster Rovers versus Tranmere Rovers in League 2. The rearranged fixture from mid-January, I think it was. 21st off the top of my head. So rearranged fairly quickly, but it's provided a bit of a fixture congestion in February. Lots of games coming thick and fast, which is good after our recent result. Um, but yeah, we move into this one and hopefully three points are on the way. If you're an existing subscriber, thank you so much for supporting the channel and sticking around. It is greatly appreciated. We're on the road to 3,000 subscribers, 2,800 and something at the minute. Um, so yeah, if you're new to the channel and this is the first video that you've seen, please consider clicking subscribe so you don't miss any future content. There will be a match day vlog coming up tomorrow night after the game for this one. And if you are new to the channel, this is a format that we go through match previews. We'll look at previous meetings between the two clubs, current form across all competitions. I choose a Doncaster Rovers player to say a few words about, and I also pick a player out for Tranmere, who I think is the one to watch in tomorrow night's fixture. But as I always say, you know your club much better than me. So in the comments down below, let us know who us Rovers fans should be watching out for tomorrow. And then we finish the video off with three predictions. The predicted team lineup, that's thanks to FanHub. And then me and the family have got a predictions league table, an update on that, and then the all important score prediction to finish the video off. So let's get into previous meetings. Donny and Tranmere have faced off a total of 77 times in our history. Rovers coming out on top on 37, Tranmere winning 20 of those occasions and we've shared the spoils on 20. So it's in the favour of Doncaster Rovers coming into this one, but I'm not confident got to be saying that. We look at the last five and it's all in the Rovers' favour or majority in the Rovers' favour uh, as well. So go back to 2011 in the League Cup, it was a 3-0 home win for Donny. And then in League One in the 2012-13 season, we did the double, uh, a 2-1 away victory and a 1-0 home victory. And then in the curtailed season in 2020, we went to Tranmere and beat them 3-0, but they uh, returned the favour earlier on this season on, on Boxing Day with a 3-0 home win for them. And to be fair, the way that I feel at the minute, I think it could be a, uh, a defeat in tomorrow's fixture. But looking back at the history, Donny have got the better of Tranmere um, the majority of the time. So hopefully that continues tomorrow night. Current form though does say a different story. Donny coming into this one with two wins and but coming into it on the back of three straight defeats. Uh, Tranmere on the other hand, a defeat, two draws, a win, and then a defeat last time out. For Donny though, dis disappointing defeat in our first home game in over a month uh, to struggling Hartlepool as well. Um, Hartlepool have only won six games all season, two of those have been against us. Um, so yeah, it's not looking good. We need to put that right tomorrow night, um, or for me, the, the ground will just become more more toxic, and not just the stadium, social media as well. Um, and rightfully so, every, everybody's got their opinion and they're entitled to it. Uh, and it's getting much, much noisier in terms of the uh, disappointment and frustration coming from Rovers fans. Um, and I echo that. It is very disappointing to, to hear that the plan and the, the target was promotion, playoffs, however we however we got up, but we just seem a million miles away from it at the minute. Um, so yeah, I'm frustrated too. New additions looked okay from January though uh, in the game against Hartlepool. Nelson and Brown looked tidy at the back. Uh, Lavery looked to be getting a bit of a partnership forming with uh, with with George Miller. Todd Miller, we've still not seen him. He wasn't in the squad. Um, I'm not sure why, but Lakin came on for a short period of time. Didn't really impact the game too much, but none of the subs did um, on Saturday, in my opinion. But for me, at the minute, it's just not enjoyable as a Donny fan going to the games. It's becoming a bit of a chore and a hobby should be fun. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what impact the last couple of seasons has next season because less fans coming through the door less merchandise sold and, and everything that surrounds less fans in the stadium will impact our budget um, and this downward trajectory that we're currently on i don't see stopping um, so big big things need to happen between now and next season for for us to be looking at next season in any sort of positive light hopefully it starts tomorrow night with a win <laughs> 
Tranmere, on the other hand, a little, a little bit like Donny um, this season. Expectations for playoffs. They only just missed out last season, um, but just too inconsistent to really stamp any sort of authority on the league this season. Currently one point ahead of Donny in 14th with 10 wins, 10 defeats and 8 draws. So they'll be looking to, to get on a, on a decent run as soon as possible because a win against Orient um, a couple of games ago and only a narrow defeat last time out against Stockport who are now in the playoffs. I think that'll give them belief and confidence coming into this one tomorrow night. Uh, they'll be thinking that any team really down to 15th in the table puts a run together and playoffs isn't out of the picture this season. So, yeah, they'll be looking to start their run um, at Doncaster tomorrow. On to player profile for this one, I have gone with Caelan Lavery, uh, 30 years old forward, signed him from Scunthorpe in January. And I think he's an OK addition to the squad. He helps George Miller up front and he has the ability to play across the front three. So we've got a bit of versatility with him. Um, the only frustration for me is that his age doesn't really lend itself to, to, to making any profit on him. I know we've not, we've not paid a, a penny for him, we're only paying his wages, um, but for me I'd like to see Doncaster. I think we're a club that needs to buy players at a younger age, develop them and try and sell them off to get profit. Um, hopefully it brings across the, the form that he had at Scunthorpe, scoring plenty of goals down in the National League but he just needs to put that in at the EFL level. His record's not been not been superb um, at previous clubs in the EFL, but he does bring bags of experience across both, all three of the leagues, Championship League One and League Two. And I think if he forms that partnership with Miller, who knows, we may we may have a, a decent forward pair in there. 30 years old, people see it as, as old, but I think he's got another two or three seasons in him at least so he looked positive against Hartlepool he had a good opportunity which the keeper saved um, hopefully when he gets that goal it opens it opens the floodgates and we see the best of Caelan Lavery at Doncaster. For me the one to watch at Tranmere as I said at the start of the video you know you come much better than what I do so if there's somebody else we should be watching out for get them in the comments down below there's obviously Kane Hemmings uh, but if you saw my preview for the game that was postponed, I've stuck with the same player that I uh, identified in that one, Kieran Morris, 28 years old winger, 24 appearances this season, three goals, five assists. Um, there's a couple of players on five assists, he's one of them, but he's also contributed a number of goals this season as well. Scored against Stockport at the weekend, as did Kane Hemmings, so I think both of those players are the goal threats in the Tranmere team, both scoring and creating the chances as well, so I think we need to keep keep them pinned down and we may have an have a chance of getting something at home um but yeah i think he'll be coming into this game full of confidence having scored at the weekend so for me the one to watch in this one tomorrow night is kieran morris on to my predicted team lineup so as i said this is thanks to fanhub if you've not downloaded the app yet please go ahead and do so plenty of features to get stuck into but for me the predicted team lineup i'm going with a similar Formation similar setup to what we did against Hartlepool. I think the two up top worked to a certain extent. I think it was nice to see George not not so isolated up front. So I'm going to stick with that. Uh, but one change. Um, I'm not sure. Nelson came off looking like it was a hamstring problem. So I've gone with Mitchell in goal. The back three of Williams, Anderson, and Olawu. Hopefully, I mean Anderson and, and Williams for me didn't perform particularly well they weren't put under much pressure um, against Hartlepool but the, the one bit of pressure that they did get put under I don't think Anderson was close enough to Nera. he turned put a lovely through ball through and Williams although he was trying to push the guy wide he didn't get tight enough didn't put a, an effort into to stop the shot and that was the goal that, that sent us sent us it to a defeat so neat improvements needed at the back for sure um, wing backs of James Brown and James Maxwell and then in the midfield, Ben Close and Harrison Biggins uh, with Kyle Hurst just in front of those supporting Miller and Lavery up front. So that's my predicted team lineup. Hopefully, it's the team that can get some points in tomorrow night's fixture. Predictions lead table. So if you're new to this, me and the family predict the scoreline for every league game this season. If we get spot on, we get three points. If we get the outcome of the game right, but not the scoreline, we get one point. If we get completely wrong, we get no points. There was confidence in our family <laughs> against Hartlepool. Three of us went for wins, my dad went with a draw. Obviously we've got defeat, 
so no change in the table. Max still top on 18 points, Chris in second on 16, Daddy third on 11, and I got to double figures, but I'm still rock bottom on 10 points, so we will see what happens as the season goes on. And that takes me on to my score prediction, so as I've said, I'm, I'm lacking in any sort of confidence that we are going to be able to win a game of football anytime soon. And I'll always predict with my head and not my heart. If I predicted with my heart, it'd be a win every single game. Nobody wants to lose a game of football, but got to predict correctly um, and, and fairly and un unbiasedly. So I think our defence is suspect. Um, I think a team like Tranmere, who, puts, who could put a lot of pressure on us, could find those gaps and, and those vulnerabilities in tomorrow night's fixture. I hope that in the final third, we're, we're better than what we were against Hartlepool. I still don't think we've got enough to win this game. I think it's going to be a tough watch. It's going to be a tough evening. I'm going with Rovers 1, Tranmere 3. And that's where I'm going to leave this video. If you've enjoyed it, please stick a big thumbs up on it for us, please. Comments in the section down below. Subscribe if you haven't already. If you're a Tranmere fan, go into the game tomorrow night. Get in touch on social media and you can feature in the fans' thoughts. Uh, but yeah, please stick around on the channel to see more content. All that's left for me to say is thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one.